What does it take to build something important enough to take with you, no matter where you go? Resilient enough to withstand your best days and your worst days. Beautiful enough to be worth your patience and commitment. What if it just took saying yes, day after day? What if you committed to no days disconnected from your time? Welcome to Merge, everyone. How are y'all doing today? Are we awake? No. I was going to say I got a solid yes, I think, from half of you, and the other half, solid no. I'm Katie Foster, the student ministry director here. So let's just give Marshall one huge round of applause. It takes a lot, and, and the uh, people in tech, so Peter and everything. So it takes a lot of dedication and time to do uh, the worship part of this. And I can't help, help it, but like I tend, when I'm here, to like throw my whole self into worship. It probably doesn't look as being an introvert, I feel like I'm being really like crazy, but like probably not to other people. <laughs> But so a couple weeks ago, uh, Marshall led uh, worship in between allergies and annual conference, because basically annual conference, you're praising God for like two days straight um, for a lot of it and talking. I told myself I would take it easy that week, so I wouldn't like cough and hack and lose my voice. Um, but then worship started, and I just threw my whole self into it, okay? And I was singing at the top of my lungs, and I, could, I felt bad for the people around me because my voice, I could feel it crack a couple times because I was just losing it. But I just love to worship our God. But on the other side of that, I also just love music. Anybody else just love music? Yeah. Songs are kind of a big deal to us, right? We listen to them for motivation, uh, connection to emotions, and actually just connection. Is there a song that, you know, every time it plays, it really just either brings you back or it makes you just, like, feel something? Sometimes, like, in our head, automatically, you have, like, a list of 20 songs. So the, the songs I have, you probably don't know, because one of them, like, was released a decade ago, and the other one was written decades ago. It was before I was even born. So the first one is the song, Hey Pretty Girl, by Kit Moore. So if anyone remembers that song, that's a country song. So if you don't listen to country, yeah. So it makes me cry every time because Ryan and I danced to that song at our wedding. And there's a part of the song where it talks about the budding relationship. And then after they get married, they have a little baby girl. And those who know me, I had a baby girl first. So now every time that song plays, I just like, come undone, okay? It, yeah, every time. <laughs> then there's another song, a song called Where I Met Jesus. And more than any other song, that song, more than any other worship song, that song just hits me different. And there's a couple reasons. One, the, it's an actual story in the song, and I love songs that are stories. It just, it... One, that hits me, and I, like, cry. But you guys probably never heard of it because it was a song my grandfather played. It wasn't the song he sung on the worship stage. But it was a song he played, um, and he taught my brother Joe to play it. So I remember him practicing guitar and, you know, playing it all the time. So it's, like, ingrained in my memory, and it just brings me back, and it reminds me of him. And it remind also makes me miss him. So... There's that aspect of it, too. Songs can just bring us back and unlock memories and connect us to people, even people who aren't even here anymore. And I'm going to say something that's going to hit you. Hopefully, worship songs are no different than other songs. They're the same in this aspect. In our faith, worship songs help motivate us throughout the week. They fill us up with emotion and they help connect us with God. We believe that worship can do so much to make your life and faith better and stronger. So this is the last day of our series called Every Day. 
We've been talking about how connecting with God and getting to know him isn't a checklist or a re- of a requirements. It's not just something you do. Getting to know God is like forming any relationship. You spend time with them and the relationship grows. So we're learning how do you spend time with God every day. We've talked about how to connect to God through prayer, reading scripture, and even connecting with him through telling others about how much he loves us and them. And this week, we get to finish all, it all up by talking about, guess what? Worship. So, but what is worship? Growing up, I would have told you something completely different than what I'm about to tell you today. And oftentimes in church, we actually talk about the worship portion of church. It's a time you you describe of what Marshall just did once a week, maybe on special occasions, is the beginning of the service or the last song of the service. We stand up, we lift up our hands, we sing songs, maybe we'll clap our hands, maybe we'll sway back and forth. Depends on the person, right? And then we sit down and try to listen to the words. But music, songs, and singing are all worship, and they're all a part of worship. But that's not the whole thing. That's like trying to say lasagna is all Italian food. And I love Italian food, so I I love myself lasagna. But if I'm going to eat Italian food, I'm not saying I just love lasagna. I'm saying I also love, like, cannoli and ravioli. And, oh, man, I could go on, guys, okay? It's just such a small part of it. What we tend to forget or maybe even not realize is that we are always worshiping. Worship isn't just a music thing or actually even a faith thing. Anytime we value something, that's worship. Now, last service I brought up and lifted up my cup of coffee, but it's already gone. But I said, said, if if I value coffee, I will say I love coffee. I love getting specialty drinks. Or even, I just really like, relaxing in the morning in the peace and quiet before the chaos starts of the starts of the starts just with a hot cup of coffee it doesn't even have to be a good cup of coffee <laughs> but that's how much i love it there's nothing wrong with it but it it shows that what i value and where my heart is if you have a great relationship with someone i'm not even just talking about boyfriend girlfriend this is talking about family members even your friendships You'll appreciate them and say things like, okay, my husband, I love Ryan. I love spending time with him. I think he's amazing. I mean, I wouldn't have married him otherwise, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It shows you that I value him. But maybe sometimes it's like a sport or a musical. I'm going to go with baseball because we're the Rumble, in honor of Rumble Ponies. So I'll, you may say, I love baseball. I love my teammates. I love the games, practicing. I look forward to the season all year. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the words do show you what you value. Anytime you value something or someone, compliment it, place a high value on it, or even passionately, passionately follow it, that is worship. What songs do is add in the emotion of music and the language of lyrics. It's in the same way that in like sports, there are chants and cheers and fight songs that you participate in to celebrate your favorite teams. There are songs that we sing at church to worship God. But the goal is simple, to worship. It's to admire Compliment, appreciate, celebrate, and value the goodness of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Worship is awesome and amazing. But for some of us, our view of worship is limited. First, we limit it to only music. We say that our favorite part of church is when we get to worship God with songs. But you don't really like the other stuff. You know, I like listening to music or even singing. I don't like the preaching. I don't like the small groups or giving or serving. But all that other stuff is also worship. 
we limit it to one day a week, even just three to four songs a day. We sing and we're done and then we're free to worship other things, games, ideas the rest of the week. Or we limit it to just a feeling. We keep ourselves from worshiping because we say, I'm not just like feeling it today. So then what then we don't end up worshiping at all. And what we are then ruled by is our emotions. It's like worship has its own little box. But the truth is, worship should affect all areas of our lives. There's a book in the Old Testament titled Psalm. It's actually an anthology, which means a collection of writing, music, and different things. So, for example, if your favorite band come, comes out with, like, an anthology of their early music, and there's, like, lots of albums, like, as I'm saying this from when I was younger, but means it's a collection of some of their favorite or best-selling songs. And according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a psalm is a sacred song or poem used in worship. If you want to know more about worship, this is a great place to start. There are 150 of them, ranging in emotion from the highest highs to the lowest lows. This is talking about like praising God for his, for always being there and praising him for never abandoning us to also David's cry that we learned a couple weeks ago, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Highest highs to lowest lows. It's kind of a lot. And the author of Psalm 95 encouraged those reading and listening to actually worship God. In Psalm 95, 1 through 2, it says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. This is worship, expressing gratitude for all that God has done for us. So think about this. Expressing gratitude is a big thing. So we're going to think about it differently. I'm going to, heads up, I'm going to go back to the dark times. Back to COVID. I know we don't like to always talk about it. Back to when you couldn't go anywhere, celebrate anything, and you're down by yourself. And all, either class, you didn't have class, or class was all online. So during that time, I had my second child. And when I envisioned celebrating having my second child, I envisioned us all celebrating as a family when the baby was born. I mean, that's a normal thing to expect. But my oldest Amelia was not allowed in the hospital. My husband was discouraged to even leave. I felt separated and divided from my family. I'm sure you all felt that at different times. From those who are important to me made us give us tough choices. And I was grieving the loss of this, which is okay to do. It's, you know, not something that, yes, I survived it, but it's okay to grieve those things that you expected. So I was kind of in a bad place when we were leaving, kind of like sulking, excited to see Amelia finally. But then my heart soared, because as I pulled into our driveway, I saw that somebody decorated our house. Like, welcome, baby girl, and all this stuff. With streamers and balloons. I found out later that it wasn't necessarily my family. It wasn't even my small group. It wasn't my coworkers. It was actually my neighbors who decorated our house. And let me tell you, words could not express the amount of gratitude I felt for them. But boy, I tried. <laughs> I certainly tried. And this is what we do with God. Because God is so good and generous to us. Worship is simply thanking God for that. And some of it, yeah, sometimes you read the lyrics or sing songs, and sometimes I think, like, this just falls short of how I feel, which is why I throw in my all. But worship is simple. It doesn't have to be flashy, but it can be creative. And we don't need to make it complicated. We don't have to do a bunch of things or have a bunch of things figured out. We can simply remember that God is above all things, no matter our situation. And we can simply show up and say, you're good, God, and I thank you. 
So later in Psalms, King David, yes, the same king who said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? He wrote this. Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Everything about us is designed to respond to God. We were created so that we could reflect God's goodness to the world around us. And then in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul actually encouraged us to think of worship as a lifestyle. In Romans 12, 1, I love Romans, guys, okay, I'm just, every time I like bring up Romans, I'm like, this is it, guys. But it really, like, all of it is it. But Romans 12, 1, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. First off, Paul is acknowledging something. People are going to worship something. Could be a football team, could be a sport could be a person you're interested in, a relationship that you have, a musician or celebra- celebrity. See, we were designed and created for worship. But what do we choose to worship? Are we worshiping the most important thing, our God who loves us and gives everything for us? And I mean, I've heard this verse before, but when I've read it preparing this message, it just hit me and the Holy Spirit told me to dig in and I began to look at a study Bible and it really gave me an idea because then I began to look through it through the lens of the Jewish culture and customs at the time. Sacrifice is a word we will use, but sacrifice to them was very, very important. Part of worship in the Old Testament was actually sacrificing an animal on the altar. And they would choose, you would choose your first and your best animal. And you, there's a whole list of instructions. You can read them in the books in the Old Testament. Something very specific laws regarding it. But one thing is clear. Over and over again, this animal, animal was to be unblemished. And all for what? Why did they sacrifice animals? So their sins could be forgiven. And there were times that there's times that you sacrificed animals for even sins you didn't even know you committed. Also, that they can go to God. But after time, these sacrifices began to be just rituals. And they lost the heart behind it. So this is what my life application study Bible says. Sacrifice was important. But even in the Old Testament, God made it clear that obedience from the heart was much more important. God wants us to offer ourselves, not animals, as living sacrifices, daily laying aside our own desire to follow him, putting all our energy and resources at his disposal and trusting him to guide us. We do this out of gratitude that our sins have been forgiven. Sacrificing went beyond just something we are to do. God cares about your heart and his his relationship with you. And to put this in a different light, we're going to read the same verse, Romans 12, 1, through a different translation. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your every day, Ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Take your everyday ordinary life and place it before God. You can connect. You're sleeping, eating, and walking around to God. Anything that you connect to God and given to God as the first and best can be considered an act of worship. So when we say everything, does it mean everything? Think about the things you tend to worship or value. Sports. Again, I'm going to go with baseball. Are you worshiping God in that? Are you worshiping God with how you treat your teammates? Are you worshiping God with what priorities you set in baseball? Or maybe it's a relationship. 
doesn't matter what kind of relationship should be given to God. God should be the center of every relationship, your friendships and everything. Are you worshiping God with who you connect with? Also means going to school can be an act of worship. But how do you act in class? To your teachers, to your classmates, does it honor God? Volunteering, giving money are all acts of worship. The list could go on and on, but I think you kind of get the picture. When you take what you do and place it before God, that's worship. And you were made by God. And then we were given new life through Jesus and created for the purpose of worshiping God. And we can do this every single day. We can worship God with how we live every day. And we have a lot to say thank you for. Some big, some small. And no matter what we are facing, any circumstance, I want you to kind of think about that. But more than that, I want you to write it down. Your challenge this week is to keep a gratitude journal. Now, a lot of you are like, I am not journaling anything. That's okay. I want you to keep track and write down what you're grateful for. This can be handwritten in a journal. I can, if you need one, I have one. This could be on the notes on your phone. Make a post-it. I don't care if it's on a whiteboard on the wall. Like, write down and really think about what you're grateful for. I want you to write down all the things that you recognize as a gift from God. And each day, think of something different or think of a new list or something to add to the list. So obviously, mine is going to look a little bit different than yours. We're at different stages in life. So I'm going to talk about it right now. What's, what am I grateful for? First off, I'm thankful for drinking fountains, clean water that we drink. If you want to know the reasons why, I can get into that later. I'm thankful for coffee and whoever invented lattes. Listen, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for my three amazing kids. I am thankful that I have a house over my head. I'm thankful I have a food on the table each day. I'm thankful for my volunteers, which is why I try to thank them at least once a week. And I'm thankful for all my students here in Merch, for all that you teach me and all that you do to show the others the love of God. And if you could just write one thing a day or just keep the list going on forever. But the big thing is, is to connect it back to God. Thank God for all of these things. That's worship. And you can do that every day. When you recognize the good that's happening around you and connect it back to God, that's when it changes your heart posture. The more you recognize it, the more you'll worship. And we have a God that loves us a lot. Every day there are things happening all around us. Yeah, I know some of them aren't all good, but there are good things happening, and God is the one behind them. There's so much that we may miss or take for granted because we're wrapped up in our emotions or circumstances. And no, this isn't a middle school or a high school thing. I can tell you there's a lot of adults who do that as well. So I don't want you to miss the goodness of God being displayed in your everyday life. The same God who did all these amazing things wants to have a personal relationship with you. And God wants you to enjoy that relationship. That's what this series is all about. How to start and grow your relationship with God. Meditating on scripture, prayer, worshiping, and talking with others about God are all ways to grow your relationship from just one hour every Sunday to an everyday faith and relationship. Your everyday life can be a response to the goodness of God who wants to be connected with you. This is the God who didn't want to be divided from you. From back when they were, had the animal sacrifices, he said that's not good enough. So he sent himself, God, in a human body as a baby to live in this world, to suffer and die on a cross so our sins could be forgiven. And then, when Jesus went back to heaven, he said, no, I don't want to be apart from you. If you accept and believe in me, I will send you one, a helper, a guy. He sent us the Holy Spirit for God to live inside of us. That's how much God wants to be a part of your life. And he wants you to make 
this relationship a priority. If you haven't started this relationship, I'm about to say a prayer. And if you pray that with me, you can begin it. If you need guidance on how to keep growing your relationship with God, your small group is a perfect place to start. So let's pray. Dear God, I recognize that I struggle throughout the day. I recognize that my heart isn't always there. I recognize that I can't just make the changes on my own. God, I need you. I thank you for sending your son. I believe that he died and rose again for me, that you want to be connected with me. God, I pray that I, you will be Lord of my life, that I will worship you with every part of who I am. I ask that your Holy Spirit comes in and steps into my heart, that we begin this relationship, and that you slowly change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you really liked it, hit subscribe below. And if you wanna check out some other videos that we have on our channel, click right over here. And if this video up here is one that's specifically picked out for you. Thank you again for watching.